Hello, welcome back to Brandon Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, um, I'm going to start like a little project. It's um, it, it was inspired by um, this ASCII art. Um, I go back to like the most um, kind of most most crude, the most raw versions of art. Art. Um, this artwork was uh, originally made, I think, by um, like computer artists back then, when the machine can only produce just uh, letters. Uh, you can't actually draw like a pixel with color, so they are using just a characters um, like this. Actually, this is a very good example. Um, they use this character to generate an image, and this is a kind of ASCII art that's kind of made probably. Um, everything made by hand, so every single bit, and then this is kind of a real ASCII art, but there's in a recent version, you probably saw like a different versions that's uh, much simpler, like this one um, probably made using uh, like a programming language, and there's also type of ASCII art that's actually something like this, it's probably just like a resampling from original image, and then kind of conf converted into character maps. Um, so that's the type of uh, ASCII art that I'm going to recreate uh, using nodes inside Blender. Um, I will be using both animation nodes and spray chalks and kind of um, just try a, um, like a different way to do it. Probably I will, I will use the one that's actually the simplest one, but it's actually not the most efficient. And I will try like a like a like a, the more efficient versions of the ASCII art. Um, yeah, it's it's actually quite an interesting little project. Um, you will find. Um, you can do this using simple like simply just using uh, Python scripting and dealing with string and character maps. But yeah, I'll I'll be doing it kind of differently because it's, I'm gonna use uh, nodes and procedural workflow. So yeah, let's just get started. Uh, I'll close Safari and get to Blender. I will actually use um, animation nodes first and then I will use SpareChalk and I'm gonna do do it in the first, the easiest way but not the most efficient. It's gonna be like uh, slow for Blender and next time I'll do like uh, the more proper way, like the more efficient way to do it. So the idea is of course with ASCII art you want to create like a grid, like a grid of, um, if you imagine like a pixel grid, like a pixel art kind of grid. With pixel art, you have uh, a lot of numbers to work with, like uh, RGB. So you have like 255, 256 color of red, green, blue, and combine, it, combine them together. You have a lot of color to work with for each pixel. But for ASCII art, you can imagine that uh, you make the artwork uh, like a pixel by pixel, but using the character map. Because the character map, actually, actually if you look at it from far away, character, each character has certain type of uh, kind of like a grayscale that you can use to kind of to create uh, different shades of uh, an image until it's kind of resembling like a like a something like something you can recognize as something else so that's the whole idea really uh, but for the starter uh, I'll be using Animation nodes, like I said, uh, but I will use spread chalk next time. Um, this one, the idea is, we have we're gonna have like a lot of uh, like a text objects, and then kind of we arrange it in a grid, something like this. And you can imagine, even by uh, if you have like sixteen by sixteen, you already have two hundred fifty six um, text objects, and I think Blender actually do not like that too much. Um, if you have like a, a thousand text objects in the scenes, that's gonna be um, can be kind of slow um, for Blender to handle. So we we're gonna see um, that you can do that quite easily using animation nodes and spread chalk. So this is not the most efficient, but this is the simplest way to do it. Um, uh, yeah. So next time I'll I'll show you how to do it using just a single text objects and properly using. Um, string type of data. String type of data is like a text data uh, when you're dealing using Python. It's called string because um, string is made up of characters and so on and so on. But for now we're gonna do it the, the sim like the simple way. 
Um, yeah, so I'll get started. I'll switch to animation nodes this time. I'll use Sphere Chalk um, next time. So we're not gonna do like a like a complex um, like ASCII art yet. It's just like gonna be random. So let's get started. Um, first of all, we're gonna need object instancer because we are using animation nodes and this is the common workflow if you want to generate a bunch of objects you need to have object instancer node um, and you kind of make a, like duplicates of this so we're gonna have uh, text object this is gonna be the output this type of mesh that we will be instancing is a text object so I switch to text and we don't know how many yet it, but that's the the number of text object is really dependent on the, the point how many points we want to have for sampling we can actually use a um, hundred by hundred grids probably that's a good idea uh, so this is an ASCII art basic um, let's have like hundred by uh, ten by ten so we have like hundred points of sampling we can use the grid mesh for our purpose and simply by let's see let me think just plug the vertices into the number of into the instances and we get this uh, get list link so we have the total number of vertices equal the the text total number of text instance and the next thing is we want to loop through this all these text objects and also we're gonna provide a position for each text object simply plug that in and then this is gonna be the output and then we here oh actually we can simply plug this text objects into this guy into this guy and then the size text this is um, there is this text parameter here. This is when we type in our own text. Um, let's just type in add for now, and then for each text object, we want to place it into position, location, and this is the object, and this is the vector position. Okay, now we have this view from top. Just a symbol add. Um, but we want to be able to kind of randomize it somewhat. So let me think first. We want, um, let's make like 16 by 16. So this is kind of like uh, quite a lot already. 16 by 16, you can go even higher, like 10 by 10, uh, uh, 20 by 20, like 400 of them. 16 by 16 is uh, kind of, if you make like a pixel art made of 16 by 16 pixel and you have 256, that's kind of a good number back then. These days you can have like a million of pixels, of course. And we don't want to see this all this line, so we want to hide it. Simply selecting the object in center node and tap U. Hide the rela relationship lines, and we have this. Uh, we're not gonna be using color actually. I'm just gonna be maybe like random randomize this. We're not gonna be using size or everything because ASCII art is actually normally made of uh, like a monotype kind of text it doesn't you, you cannot change the color yet you, you can cheat later on you can use color but with ASCII art uh, proper ASCII art has the same size of text and they're like monotype monotype means each of the character actually um, kind of arranged in a like a like a grid so you cannot have text like a, so for every character text it will fit nicely on a on a grid that's basically what it is so i'll save this and save it again okay we have a single character and we can change this into any kind of number or any kind of text we can actually randomize it already um depending on how you want to do it animation nodes actually comes with a bunch of uh interesting nodes that's dealing with a string or text data uh, like this I think randomized text randomized is actually quite interesting where you can have like a b c d here um, 
I will use a debug real quick. So we have text objects and you can see by specifying the length and specifying um, the characters this this random text will generate random text very very quickly and yeah this is something that's very simple to do because of these nodes and and you if you want you can actually simply use this uh, for our to randomize our ASCII art so like I said for this one I'm not gonna make like a wonderful ASCII art but I'm just gonna make like generate like a random characters so that's uh, that what I'll do exactly so I'm just gonna generate like random text between A and Z here and the output can go into our text object see this is W now we, we can have like a multiple text but for now we just need a single string of text and this guy the seed can randomize it so if we use the index because we are inside a loop and if we plug in the index into the seed we're gonna have this a uh, random character being generated you probably already know this uh, and this is not like super big deal but imagine if you're just uh, changing the character into 0 and 1 for example suddenly you have this something that's resembling like a uh, random ASCII art characters but it's just 0 and 1 is a uh, again we did this already in the past something similar but still this is very very interesting and once you think about um, how to generate ASCII art using each character that's being arranged into a grid you suddenly have uh, like the idea how to do this you can actually put in something like uh, like this you know and you see the result this is just randomizing this one two three three different characters uh, actually I can I even do just two of this and you guess you start to get a pattern and that's actually that's actually how the ASCII art um, starting to emerge if I make the grids even smaller you can see maybe not the prettiest but this is kind of interesting kind of pattern being generated very very easily you can go higher like 25 by 25 I can even make uh, this a little bit more in the x-axis and this is being generated on the fly how many objects do we have now um, 50 times 25 is 50 times 25 1250 this is not bad actually the animation nodes um, <clears throat> and the objects is pretty fast now um, the X we can go higher so we have 2500 text objects in the scene it's gonna get even slower so I don't recommend you to go like 5000 text objects or 10,000 text objects this is it's not the most efficient really in reality you want to have um, a single a single text objects that can generate all of this data on the fly that's actually the most efficient way and we want to do that um, we can do that actually using animation nodes or stretch of either way you want to choose with the simplicity I think if you look at it I think animation nodes can do it in a in a this kind of uh, maybe like kind of Pythonic or very beautiful elegant way. Spreadshop do it in the in a way that's kind of different uh, where you don't need to do like a looping with Spreadshop you kind of uh, Spreadshop is really good when handling like a lot of data f um, like sampling multiple data like a um, array very very quickly with animation nodes, um, currently I think the way the way I think of it is um, it can be like a simpler. I don't know. It's just two different way. I'll show you um, in the next live noting video. But this is um, yeah, this is this is type of ASCII art, and you can this is just random. Um, I don't think animation nodes have a noise node yet. Maybe in the recent fashion of animation nodes they have uh, like a noise turbulence and fractal kind of nodes like just like in spreadshops but you can kind of trick 
trick it. Um, you can use Scratch off to generate a bunch of data and you pass it into animation nodes. Um, that will work really well as well. So here, like I said, you can really just change the character and you, you, you start to get like a different result of ASCII art. Uh, this is just using number, XYZ even. Uh, see, XYZ give you this. Um, I think this is a type of uh, ASCII art, even though it doesn't look like anything else, more like a cloud. It's actually more like a random, but if you use like a script type, this is quite interesting. Because just the way our brain look at things, it looks like a pattern. And if the pattern makes sense to our brain, then it's we kind of tell we can tell it's it's a beautiful or it's ugly or it makes sense or it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, currently this kind of this type of art maybe it doesn't quite make sense. However, this can can look kind of interesting because it, there's a kind of like a repeat a pattern. It's quite nice. Yeah, and you can change this into anything, you know, like, even like, uh, if we use like a, all these characters from, from our, like a button, like a, the top button of our numeric here, we start to get this kind of ASCII art, right? It's a bit random, I know, but still, this can be quite interesting, depending on the typeface or font that you're using also. So that's uh, the first random ASCII art we generated using animation nodes and this is how it looks. Just a bunch of a uh, bunch of nodes. Uh, we simply say, okay, if I am telling the whole recipe in a, like a single step-by-step, -step, first you did here with animation nodes, generate point grids. And then that's for the position for each of text objects. And the text objects, the total number is matching the, the grid points here. And then we put everything into the loop. Inside the loop, we just basically telling it on the fly, hey, for each text objects, generate a random character that's based on this list. And then assign it into each text objects. As assign this string of data into each text objects. And then for the position, simply use the grid that you just generated earlier. That's it. That's actually how simple it is. And if you want to translate this into um, Python program, it's actually that's the same of concept, the same logic uh, happens. Later on in the next live noting, I will use Sprechalk, and it's going to be slightly different. Sprechalk doesn't have like a Sprechalk doesn't have lots of nodes dealing with text like uh, animation nodes. So and and the way Sprechalk works. Originally, Sprechalk is more like a for mesh data kind of modifications, mesh data manipulations and generators. But Sprechalk also can be used for string in a, in a different way. Maybe more advanced, uh, I say, but anyway, uh, we're going to take a look next time. For this one, I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feedbacks, uh, comments, just let me know in the comments section below. And I, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.